if you're looking to run Android on a PC, you've stumbled at the right place. Check out this awesome setup running Android like a dream. But here's the kicker. It's all powered by this tiny $55 device called the Raspberry Pi. Imagine transforming your PC setup into an Android powerhouse packed with millions of Google apps, AI tools, and productivity apps. Perfect for a high school kid like you to explore, game, and create like never before. Stick with me and I'll show you step by step how to turn your Raspberry Pi into an epic Android PC experience. Let's dive into what you'll need to make this happen. Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B with 4GB RAM. If you have a different model, that's okay. The process is the same. Micro SD card. Micro HDMI to HDMI cable. If you already have an HDMI cable, this adapter should work for you. Heatsink to install on the Raspberry Pi as we plan to maximize its processing power. Type-C cable for power. A monitor, keyboard and mouse. Since we are running Android, the Pi's processor might get hot just like your Android phone when you're gaming or multitasking. A heatsink is essential to keep things cool. Without it, the bare processor can't handle the heat. I'm using an aluminum heatsink case with dual fans to cool my Raspberry Pi significantly. Installing it took me a bit, but for you, it's a snap. Quick fact. Did you know the Raspberry Pi 4 circuit board packs a six layer design up from four layers in older models? That's 50% more complexity, using HDI tech with laser drilled bias to cram in blazing fast USB 3.0, dual 4K displays, and enough power to run Android right here at home. Now, if you're wondering how engineers design something as intricate as a six layer PCB with laser drilled VS, that's where tools like Altium Designer and Altium 365 come into play. Altium is a big name in this space, built to optimize complex projects like these. Altium Schematic Capture transforms your paper circuit designs into electronic formats that simulation and PCB design software can instantly understand and process. Altium's comprehensive harness design functionality empowers you to develop complete wiring harness solutions from individual pin connections to manufacturing documentation, either as standalone projects or integrated within multi-board designs. Altium 365 seamlessly connects everyone from mechanical designers to manufacturing specialists in one cloud-based platform, streamlining your electronics design journey from concept to production. There's more good news. If you're interested to try Altium Designer, you can get a free trial and 25% off. Avail it by signing up here. The link for this page is mentioned below in the description. Now let's turn your Raspberry Pi into an Android PC. These steps are super simple, so even if you're new to this, you'll be running Android in no time. Follow along. Step 1. Download an Android image. Open your web browser and visit Constakang's official site. On the right, you'll see device options for Raspberry Pi models. I'm choosing the Pi 4 since that's what I have, but the Pi 5 or Pi 3 works too. Select the latest AOSP Constakang Android 15 build. Scroll down to find the download link, click download and let it download. Once it's done, move to the next step. Step 2. Flash the SD card. Launch Raspberry Pi Imager on your computer. I'm removing the SD card from my Raspberry Pi as I've already set up Raspbian OS. You can reuse the same SD card or use a new one with an SD card adapter. Connect it to your computer. Choose your device, in my case, Raspberry Pi 4. Click Choose OS, scroll to the bottom and select Use Custom. Pick the Constakang Android image you downloaded. Select your micro SD card as storage, mine's 32 gigabytes. Click next, skip customization to avoid issues and click yes to continue. The imager will write and verify the image file. Once flashing is complete, the imager will confirm it's done. Remove the SD card from the adapter and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. Step three, boot Android for the first time. Power it up with the type C cable. Make sure your heatsink is installed. The Pi should boot from the SD card as it takes priority. Watch Android boot up on your monitor. On the home screen, you'll see the recent apps button, home button and back button. Pull down from the top to access quick settings, where you can adjust brightness and other settings, just like on your phone. The home screen includes apps like calendar, gallery and a basic web browser. In the main apps menu, you'll find calendar, camera, clock, contacts, 
files gallery search settings and browser go to settings about tablet to see details the device name is raspberry pi 4 model is raspberry pi 4 and android version is 15 along with other info in system raspberry pi settings you'll find useful options we'll revisit later since google apps aren't installed yet we can't access the play store from this device yet to install google apps we'll use a workaround with aptoid step 4 install the aptoid store on your windows computer open your browser and visit aptoid find the download button and grab the aptoid apk once it downloads insert a usb stick into your computer open the file manager go to downloads and copy the aptoid apk to the usb stick eject the usb insert it into your pi and open the files app find the usb stick locate the aptoid apk and double click to install if prompted for permissions go to settings and allow unknown sources open aptoid Skip the setup prompts and connect your Pi to Wi-Fi via quick settings. Search for Microsoft Edge. Install Edge, allowing Aptoid to handle the installation. Step 5. Install Google Play services. With Edge installed, search for Mind the Gaps Android 15. Click the GitHub link. Find the 15100 ARM64 repository, go to releases, and download the ARM64 zip file for Android 15. Once downloaded, go to settings system, Raspberry Pi settings, and enable reboot to recovery. Pull down from the top, select shutdown, then restart to enter recovery mode. In recovery, click install, navigate to downloads, select the mind the gaps zip, and swipe to install Google services. Wipe the cache Dalvik and swipe to confirm. Reboot the system. Back in Android, you'll see the Google Play Store in the Apps menu. Open it and try signing in. If you see this device isn't Play Protect certified, your device needs to be registered with Google. Step 6. Register for Google Play Store. Go to Settings System Raspberry Pi Settings. Enable ADB and SSH and note the displayed IP address. On your Windows PC, visit the Android developer's site and download the ADB SDK. Extract it, cut the folder, go to your C drive, create a new folder and paste it there. Copy the platform tools directory path and add it to your systems path via system settings. Advanced system settings, environment variables, new, paste the path and click OK. Visit Constakeng site, scroll to the comments, and find Gary's comment with ADB instructions. Open command prompt as administrator, type ADB to confirm it's installed, then run ADB devices. It may show no devices initially. Connect to your Pi with ADB Connect Pi's IP address. Ensure ADB runs as root with RDB root, then run bshell. Copy and run the command from Gary's comment to get your Android device ID. Manually copy the ID. Visit Google's device registration page, enter the ID and register. Return to the Pi, turn off ADB and SSH for safety and try the Play Store again. If you still see the certification error, wait 30 to 60 minutes and try again. Sign in, accept Google's terms and you're in. Now you can install apps directly from the Play Store. Step 7. Enjoy your Android PC. Your Raspberry Pi is now a full Android PC. Open the Play Store and download apps like YouTube, Khan Academy or NCERT for learning or AI tools to experiment with. With Google services, You've unlocked millions of apps for a true PC experience on a $55 device. There you have it, your Raspberry Pi is now an Android powerhouse ready for studying or exploring AI apps, all for just $55. I hope this guide made it super easy to set up. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more tech projects, and drop a comment with your favorite Android app to try on your Pi. Check the description for links to Constakang, Mind the Gaps, and more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.